Hey y'all, so today we're going to do a shoulder rig review because it's the dead of winter and I like shoulder rigs in the winter. So we're looking at the El Paso Saddlery number 200 shoulder rig. This one's going to be a little unorthodox and a little uh, not what I usually do, but you'll see in a minute why it's going to be that way. So with that being said, let's go to the bench and get to the review. <laughs> All right, here we are on the bench and we're going to start as usual with craftsmanship except uh with craftsmanship we're kind of gonna that's going to kind of be where we both begin and end on this review um this holster has zero hours on it i usually try and wear a holster for a little while to uh, get a break in period and get a feel for it uh this holster has no time on it and craftsmanship is the reason why so we're going to start with that um, starting with the mag pouch, right? So mag pouch wasn't actually that bad. A uh, little crudely made, and keep in mind these are these are a two hundred dollar holster, and I waited four months for this. So uh, if I'm a little harsh, it's because this is not something you buy and buy off Amazon and it gets to you the next day. There's quite a long wait for these. Um, craftsmanship is kind of crude. There's some loose thread, uh, nothing real big, right? Like there's you know loose thread that I just pulled off, but. Um, other than that, you know, craftsmanship on the speed loader wasn't that bad. Snaps are fairly tight. Uh, pull them undone, right? They come undone, and I'm sure they would loosen up with use. But again, haven't really used it. But I uh, did notice snaps are kind of tight there, right? So going down to the straps. The straps, there's not really any big issues with for quality. Uh, they, they seem to be fairly well made, and they are adjustable so that's nice yes i know stuff is falling over but we're gonna go with it right uh, where the really huge quality control issue gets to is the holster itself the craftsmanship on this so they did stitching along here but what they but you also see right is you see like pencil marks from where they um where they drew it out which isn't that big a deal but again you would expect that to be cleaned up on a 200 hundred dollar four month uh wait time holster but then you see here like okay so here's a spare hole that they put in that they didn't use and then you can see like along here where they uh used the little machine they have to make the lineup for the holes right uh there was extra there right just small little things right imperfections in the stitching just little things on here that kind of shock you on a $200 holster. Here you'll see where I guess they were probably cutting for this. They went deep and there's this nice big gouge in the leather here. Not that big a deal, it's pretty much just cosmetic, but something you notice that you wouldn't think would be there. Moving to the thumb brake, where we have a huge issue, and I'm gonna talk about this, but first we're gonna to get to the thumb brake. So the holster is lined on the inside, which is nice, right? A lining kind of protects the finish of your gun. What doesn't is when this, the thumb brake here, the snap, was not countersunk or covered in any way, right? Sometimes you'll see people put excess leather around here that will cover it, or they'll just counter countersink it so it's flush. They did not do that here, so it is exposed to rub the finish off your gun. Luckily, because of the design of this holster, that won't ever happen because the gun does not fit. So I'm gonna put the gun into the holster, right? I'm gonna push it in all the way into the holster, right? It's all the way in. You can see, uh, you know, I've definitely pushed it in because there's stress marks on the leather of me trying to insert the gun all the way. And the thumb brake was cut entirely too short. So the thumb brake is so short that there's not even any chance of getting it to snap closed. Um, I know sometimes thumb brakes are relatively stiff when they're brand new. This is not the case. I've turned this and stretched this, and I mean you've got a good you've got a good inch distance between that. So basically, um, the holster was unusable, right? So pull that out. And I contacted El Paso Saddlery about that, and I'm like, hey guys, I don't know what happened here. If you made the holster for the uh, wrong gun or what happened, but the holster is unusable. Uh, it took me a couple days to get a hold of someone who was actually uh, important enough to handle the situation, and they told me they were going to make me another holster. I'd get it the next week. Two weeks later, I messaged them and found out that the holster was coming out, and I received the replacement, right? Now, you might think, okay, one mess up, not that big a deal, and they did stand behind it and make it right. Here's the replacement for the holster, which when you look online, by the way, this is $91, I think, like 90-something dollars. 
Um, not cheap to get a second replacement. Obviously, they didn't charge me, but I figured I'd just throw that in for um, context. This is $100, basically $100 when you pay shipping uh, replacement part. Right, again, the thumb brake piece is not recessed. So I thought, okay, right, ready to use the holster. And not so much. So I once again push the gun in and it snaps close, right? You think, oh good, it snaps close, except they screwed up the other direction to the point where it's so loose, there is a ton of movement in the holster. And as you can see, you've got almost an inch back and forth, which is really bad for the finish of your gun and thus makes it unsafe because I bet if you pulled hard enough, you could probably get the gun to come out without undoing the thumb snap. So uh, again, second time around, still an epic fail. Uh, so basically, I do not recommend this holster at all. I do not recommend El Paso Saturday. Uh, and yeah, so something else I wanna cover, this little silly strap here. So this strap is supposed to snap on here, right? And it's, it comes around and they mark it as a safety strap. Um, I have never seen a shoulder rig ever before this come with this silly little strap. And I've not seen one after. And I basically immediately took this off and threw it basically in a drawer, never intending to use it because it's kind of silly. And plus, in a self-defense situation, I would not want to have to do undo a second strap, pull that off, and then get to the thumb brake to get the gun. And a well-made holster, the thumb brake would be more than enough to retain the firearm, even with this being a slight downward cant. Um, I actually asked them before they made the holster if they could make the holster without the strap because I had no intention of using it. They told me they couldn't do that because of legal reasons, something about, uh, you know, the lawyer saying it was extra safe or I don't know. Um, but so I really thought it was kind of weird for someone that was supposed to be, you know, premium holster maker. I mean, they've been around since, uh, I believe, 1889 is what it says on their catalog. I uh, was really surprised to see that they insisted they had to have this. Basically, basically, uh, the Hillary Hull of El Paso Saturday is this weird little strap here. So that's kind of my review on the El Paso Saturday number 200 shoulder rig. I do not recommend. I have zero hours wearing it, so I don't know how well it conceals. I don't know uh, how well it rides or it's comfortable, but um, that's my review. And I, I do not recommend the holster. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Or if you know of anybody that makes uh, really good shoulder rigs, put down below and have a good day.